The overstitch system was designed to bridge the gap between laparoscopy and endoscopy and enable physicians to develop new, less invasive procedures. The overstitch system is a suturing system that provides physicians a non-invasive endoscopic approach to perform durable surgical procedures for GI defects, complications, and disease state management. The indication for use, endoscopic placement of sutures, and approximation of soft tissues. The system can be used within the esophagus, stomach, and colon. Its broad range of applications include gastric bypass revision for weight rate gain, repair of post-surgical leaks and fistulas, closure of defects following ESD, and many more. The items needed for a case include the overstitch system, which includes the needle driver and the anchor exchange, polypropylene or polydioxinone sutures, cinches, a tissue helix, and an overtube. An Olympus double channel therapeutic gastroscope is required. Depending on your procedure, additional accessories may also be required. This disposable system attaches to a dual channel Olympus endoscope. The overstitch system is based upon shuttling a needle between the anchor exchange and the curved needle body. The needle is first loaded onto the curved needle body. After the needle is loaded, the device is ready to take a stitch. The objectives of this video are as follows, that you are able to identify the system components and recommended accessories. You are able to set up the device on an endoscope. You will know the key suturing steps and be able to load the suture on the device. You will be able to use the tissue helix to manipulate tissue. You will understand how the cinch is loaded and deployed. You will be able to remove the device from the endoscope and finally have the ability to use the overtube endoscopic access system. First, we will begin by setting up the overstitch suturing system. First, insert the alignment tube down the therapeutic channel of the gastroscope. Hold on to the edges of the end cap with the needle driver closed and slide it till it fully covers the end of the gastroscope. Next, take the needle driver handle and point the bracket at a 90 degree angle to the handle. Position the lip of the bracket adjacent to the biopsy channels and rock the handle down to lock onto the gastroscope. At this point, you can rotate the needle driver handle in any direction. As you open and close the handle, you are controlling the motion of the needle driver. Take the anchor exchange catheter that holds the anchor and the suture and load it with the anchor. The anchor will slide into the tip of the anchor exchange catheter. Once you feel it click into place, pull back on the suture. I want to make that It curve as big and thread it through the therapeutic channel until the suture goes beyond the end of the tower, at which point you've created a suture loop and you can close the suturing handle. Next, load the anchor onto the needle driver. Advance the anchor exchange catheter down the therapeutic channel. Once firm resistance is met, depress the blue button, and while holding the blue button down, hold the anchor exchange catheter back. Release the anchor exchange catheter and click the handle open. At this point, you're now ready to suture into tissue. <laughs> To place a stitch, the device is positioned such that the curved needle arm and anchor pass through the tissue. The handle is then closed to advance the anchor through the tissue. After this, the anchor is retrieved with the anchor exchange catheter. Advance the catheter down the therapeutic channel until resistance is met. Next, brace your fingers on the biopsy valves and pull back on the anchor exchange catheter until a pop is felt. Immediately stop pulling on the catheter and squeeze the handle open to complete the stitch. Continue the loading and unloading of the anchor until the desired suturing sequence is complete. After the stitching sequence is completed, the anchor exchange is advanced and the blue button is depressed to release the anchor. Now, you will grab your cinch and take the distal end of your suture 
and place it through the gold loop on the cinch. Pull a small portion of your suture through the gold loop. At this point, you'll pull the tab in line with the catheter, and the suture will pull through the catheter. It will have all the growths out of it. Hand the catheter off to the clinician while holding tension on the suture. And it's part of the puck. Hold counter tension on the suture, and while pushing the cinch forward, release the safety by pulling the thumb ring in an opposite direction of the forward two rays. Let the safety fall. Then, using two hands, fire the cinch. It's fired. It's right there. Here. This deploys the cinch and cuts the suture simultaneously. I'm very difficult and think of time and put them together as being tossed and brought out of front of it. The helix is designed to grasp and manipulate tissue. After passing the helix through the secondary channel, unsheath the helix by pressing the blue rotation knob and then rotate the knob three to four turns clockwise. With the tissue captured, the catheter can be pulled to draw the tissue into the suturing arm. After the stitch is placed and needle arm retracted, the helix is unwound by twisting the blue knob counterclockwise with slight backward tension. This process is repeated to place additional bites with the overstitch system. A variety of stitch patterns can be created, including interrupted or longer running stitch patterns. The overtube is designed to protect the esophagus and maintain insufflation during advanced endoscopic procedures. The overtube has a two-layer insufflation seal. Before insertion, ample lubrication is needed at the distal and proximal tip of the overtube. The overtube's proximal cuff is key to maintaining insufflation. The cuff is inflated by attaching a 10cc syringe and air is injected. Note, for an EGD scope, inflate up to 10 cc's of air, and for a dual channel scope, inflate up to 6 cc's of air. When inserting the overtube, it must be placed over a diagnostic EGD scope or a dual channel scope. When removing the end cap, securely grab the closed tip of the end cap and pull the device straight back off the scope without rocking the device. A towel or gauze can be placed over the tip to help grip the device. Ensure that you are not placing any pressure on the accutation cable. Last, remove the handle from the biopsy valves by rocking the handle up towards the biopsy valve. The endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty is a non-invasive endoscopic procedure designed to reduce this gastric volume. This animation provides an overview of the latest technique. A coagulation device, such as the argon plasma coagulator, is used to mark the anterior and posterior walls of the stomach along the greater curve. This creates a guideline for the first outer row of sutures. The first row of full thickness stitches is placed from distal to proximal. A running triangular suture pattern alternates from anterior wall, greater curve, posterior wall, and is repeated for five to six bites. The anchor is then released and the stitching sequence is cinched tight. The triangular pattern is repeated. A total of five to six triangular running stitches are repeated in this first row. This suture pattern is designed to maximize the reduction in stomach volume and foreshorten the greater curve. A secondary inner row of interrupted or running stitches is placed following the lesser curve to create the sleeve effect. These plications extend up to the gastroesophageal junction just below the Z-line. Insert the anchor exchange with the anchor through the 3.7 mm scope channel. Create suture slack by extending the anchor exchange past the end cap, then draw back. Prepare to load the anchor by closing the overstitch handle. 
Advance the anchor exchange until the anchor clicks onto the needle driver and will not advance further. Press the blue button on the anchor exchange and pull back approximately 1 cm to disengage from the anchor. Open the overstitch handle. Advance the tissue helix through the 2.8 mm scope channel. Push the blue cross button to expose the helix. Advance the helix to target the appropriate tissue. Using forward pressure, turn the tissue helix knob in the clockwise direction to capture tissue. To ensure a full thickness bite, maneuver the scope left. so that the helix is right of the suturing tower. Pull the tissue until it reaches the scope. Close the overstitch handle to advance the anchor and suture. Advance the anchor exchange over the anchor until the locking mechanism engages. Without pressing the blue button, pull the anchor exchange back to disengage. Turn the tissue helix counterclockwise to release from the tissue. Pull the blue cross button to retract the helix. Finally, open the overstitch handle. Pull the scope back to create suture slack and prepare for the next suture. Repeat steps for additional full thickness suture placement. Trial stands for the Multi-Center ESG Randomized Interventional Trial, or MERIT. And this is the first randomized controlled trial looking at the endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty, or ESG. The Merritt study is a really important study because it's the first rigorous, high-quality, randomized study looking at ESG. So we know that the ESG procedure works, but we need to prove that it works. And the way that we can prove it is by conducting a randomized controlled trial. So what does controlled mean? You really need to compare the ESG procedure against a control group. But here at True Weight Loss, our patients lose a lot of weight with ESG. In fact, 21% of their body weight at a year, which is very significant. But what if we're just so good here at True Weight Loss that patients would lose that amount of weight even if they didn't have the procedure? That's what we need to show. So we actually have to have a group of patients go through the entire program, the same diet and lifestyle adjustment and exercise without having the procedure. So then we can compare what the effect is of ESG compared to all those other changes. So that's a control group. The next most important aspect of, the, of this type of study is that patients must be randomized to either receive the treatment, ESG, or to be in the control group. So they enter the study and then they're randomly assigned to either ESG or control. And that's really important because randomization eliminates differences between the two groups. So the MERIT study was a nine-center randomized controlled study. It involved 208 patients across nine centers and the patients were followed for two years. This was a two-year study. This is very rigorous, took a lot of time to conduct, all with the goal of proving how well ESG works. So how do we know if the ESG actually works? Well, there's actually predefined thresholds that we need to meet. Specifically with endobariatric weight loss procedures, it was determined years ago by leaders in gastroenterology and bariatric surgery that patients should lose a minimum of 25% of their excess weight. So patients who had the ESG procedure lost an average of 49% of their excess weight. So remember the threshold was 25%. Patients lost essentially double that. Compare that to the control group where the average patient lost 4% of their excess weight. That's a 45% difference in weight loss and very significant. Interestingly, the study was designed as what's known as a crossover study. So patients entered the study, they were randomized to either ESG or control, they were followed for a year. After one year, the control patients could actually cross over and receive the ESG procedure. And those patients lost the same amount of weight, 50% of their excess weight. The other major threshold that we look at is safety. So we know endoscopic procedures are much safer than traditional bariatric surgery. So we set a really low number for complications. Specifically, these procedures should have a less than 5% complication rate. And in this case, there were three total complications, which was about 2%. So overall, well below that 5% threshold, showing that it's a very safe procedure. We also see lower than average complication rates here at True Weight Loss. In fact, we've seen three complications out of 1,100 ESGs. So that's 0.3%, significantly lower than the 2% that was seen in the MERIT study. So the most important impact of the MERIT study is that it essentially proves that ESG works. This is a major advance for the field. We now have these really effective tools. ESG is incredibly effective at helping patients lose weight, especially for patients who don't want surgery.
And the fact is most patients who need to lose significant weight don't want bariatric surgery and we need additional tools. With the MERIT study, we've proven that the ESG is one of those tools and in fact is the leading non-surgical tool to help patients lose weight. Oh my goodness.